Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. See some more people coming in. All right, so we'll get started. I'd like to thank you guys for joining us today for our webinar. My name is Jennifer, and I'll be your moderator for today's presentation. At the end of the presentation, we will take questions, so you can write them into the question box and submit them. Make sure they're detailed so that if it's something that uh, you want to go over again from the beginning of the presentation, uh, we know what to address. Anything we're not able to address during the webinar, we can answer afterwards offline or by email. Uh, you can email your questions to uh, support at winwordsoftware.com. And you can access past webinars now directly on our website, winwordsoftware.com slash webinars. Today's presentation, we will be discussing physical inventory on items with serial numbers. Our presenter today is Annabelle, and she's been with Winward Software for four years, I think. So uh, let's get started. All right. Uh, thanks, Jen. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I will be your presenter for today's webinar regarding physical inventory on items with serial numbers. So um, what are the things that uh, we need to discuss. So that would be how to do a physical account on serialized inventory items and how to fix out of stock errors for serialized items. So let's start with uh, the physical inventory on serialized items. So what you need to uh, take note when you do physical inventory on um, serialized items is when you create account batch, uh, you need to make sure that you include serialized um, items upon creating the count batch it's under the option so before you build the count batch uh, make sure that you select include serialized items under the options tab the uh, next one is uh, you can manually verify the serial numbers from the count batch so like after you have created the count batch um, you have the option to uh, manually verify the serial numbers from the count batch by clicking on the count and then um, select the serial number and then uh, when you check it it will then be showed as verified as, as, as per the screenshot below Aside from uh, manually verifying the serial number, you also have the option to use the scan batch either uh, through direct scan. Uh, if you have a, a scanner and you just wanted to uh, manually or directly scan the items or uh, through a data collector. So if you do have a data collector and then uh, afterward apply the uh, scan batch to the account batch. So I will show you. So let's just start. So uh, we will, so let's start from the beginning. So we'll be accessing the, the physical inventory count under the inventory and purchases and physical inventory count. So we create account batch. So, okay, so let's start with periodic stock count. And as what I've mentioned, we need to select include serialized items under options. So this one right here uh, to include all the items that have serial numbers. And then for me, uh, let me just select as one category. So let's say, for example, you just wanted to count uh, on a particular category. So let's start with this one right here and uh, we click on build. So from here, so we created the account batch. As you can see, those two green ones uh, have like serialized items. So manually verifying is you click on the count. And from here, um, you can verify if they are um, correct. Like let's say, okay, I do have this serial number. So you can um, check that and that means it has been verified. So when you uh, click on OK, uh, let's like say for example, you only have one serial number, you don't have this one. So you just leave this as X and this one has been verified, you click on OK. So uh, once you verified one, uh, it showed the one under the new count and then uh, you proceed with the next. So let's say you have that one. All right, so and then 
verify everything. Once you're done with, uh, once you're done with everything, uh, like let's say for example, you wanted to zero it out the rest of where I'm counted, zero it out. After that, you then have the option to like save the changes. And once you're done, um, you can then proceed with uh, processing the um, this uh, count patch. So aside from uh, manually uh, manually uh, verifying the the serial numbers, another option is to create a scan batch. So let's just close this one because uh, let's just use this one, uh, this current uh, count batch. So let's just close this one first. So you have the option to uh, create a scan batch. So let's say for example, you have your scanner and you just manually wanted to scan uh, the items so you can create a scan batch so click a new so like let's say for example you wanted to directly scan the items that you have so you select direct scan and then build so this is where when you scan the item um, it will actually show uh, the part number right here including the serial number so i don't actually have the scanner so like let's say uh, we can just like manually type it in And then, so when you actually scan, um, like the serial number will show right here. So I don't have a scanner, so let's just let's manually type in like a serial number. So let's say, let's save that. And once you are done with, like let's say this is a direct scan. So once you're done with um, scanning your items or like let's say you manually type in your uh, part number and manually enter the serial number, you have then the option to apply this um, scan batch to the count batch by clicking on apply and uh, we will then find the count batch so let's say we use this one you click on okay and then it has now been applied so if you take a look at the count batch so it's fine and this one so uh, this is the item so as you can see the count right now it showed three because we have three this one right here so this is the new one that we have added and uh, it shows right here scan batch scan batch number four so let's say for example you do have a um let's say for example uh you do have a uh, like a data collector so what we'll be doing is you can create a new um, we will create a new scan batch. So let's just uh, close that one and uh, create a new scan batch. Because earlier what we have selected was direct scan. So right now we will sele select data collector. So to so build. So if you do have a data collector and uh, you have already done um, collecting the uh, the part numbers or like the items you're done counting so the next step would be is to import the, the file uh, from your data collector so you click on the scanner import file uh, what i have is just a manual thing so we have here okay so this one it will show the serial number the two serial numbers i only have like added one part as a sample. So once you're done, uh, once it has been imported, you can click on save in the same process. So it has been verified, um, the same process with the, the other one we're in. After you're done, you need to apply this to your uh, account batch. So we click on apply and uh, click on recent to show uh, the the recent count batches this has been made so this is the one we need to apply it to click on ok and the scan batch has been successfully applied to the selected count batch so um, once it has been applied you can close the scan batch and uh, you can check on the count batch so we access it again by clicking on find recent and then there it goes. So as you can see, uh, it has the it has been it shows that it has been verified and it has the uh, scan batch uh, number right here. So 
uh, you can see that it says uh, documented no because this this one right here is like a new one so it's not actually on your uh, on the system five because as you can see uh, the quantity from system five is two and the new count is three so that means that you actually have uh, a serialized or a serial or an item which is not on the system but you do actually have one so that's that's what it means by documented uh yes that means it's it's on the system no that means that um we have just added it like a new um serial so once you're done right here so you can save it and um you can then um process uh this uh account patch so all right so that's done and this is the variance report. So uh, after physical inventory, uh, you need to make sure that uh, you save the variance report because you can no longer see it once you close the uh, count or once you close this physical count. All right. So um, the next topic would be uh, fixed out of stock errors for serialized items. So there are some instances wherein um, you found out that your serial number has out of stock status so serial numbers having that out of stock uh, could be manually deleted or it could be like a glitch so like let's say for example uh, you receive the serialized item uh, through a PO but when you check on the item inventory you can't find it um, so you can go to the serial numbers tab click on show sold or on hold and see if uh, you could find the serial number showing out of stock so let's go back right here so i have an example uh right here and uh so you will know uh what happens so like let's see for example so we go to the serial numbers tab. So we click on show sold and hold. So we have um, out of stock uh, serial. So uh, you can actually, once you have an out of stock serial number, you can click on that serial number and click on serial history. So you will know what happened. So for this particular serial number, um, it has been showing us out of stock because it was manually delete there like manually remove as you can see as it showed user adjustment but there are some instances we're in when you uh, select the serial number with an out of stock status and you click on serial history what you can see in here is the po uh where you receive it and then there are no other transactions so that means that um, there is a possibility that there was a disconnect between uh, the PO and the inventory and uh, that's the reason why it shows out of stock and uh, it is a glitch in the system so to fix that what we actually need to do is you go to the cost stock levels so let me just copy the serial number so you go to the cost stock levels and then you can manually type in the, the serial number and then it will be um, added uh, automatically and let's say for example the serial number is attached to PO like you receive it through a PO so once you have added it under the cost stack level it will then automatically be attached to that uh, PO but this one this was manually added so it doesn't have a, uh, a PO so all right so that's how uh, you fix those out of stock um status of serial numbers so that should be uh the end uh for my presentation so before we proceed with the, uh, the question and answer i will just would like to inform you guys that we have resources available which includes the help center so the help center you, you can find all available resources which are listed there at winwordsoftware.com help we also have a customer care portal wherein you can search our knowledge base and you can submit and track support tickets which you can access it at support.winwordsoftware.com so we also have winward learning academy where you can use to spin up new employees and you can find lesson based topics and you can access it through the website address academy.winwordoncloud.com um, we also have 
uh, when we're in professional services or in, you can get guidance from one of our professional services specialists. Um, like let's say you wanted to start an inventory uh, efficiencies plan. So you can access onewordsoftware.com slash professional dash, uh, dash services, or you can contact your account manager for a code or call 1-800-663 five seven five zero we also have an emergency support so the emergency support includes the following um, entire system down and able to take payment cannot log into system five or recovering from a power outage so you can access um, the support or you can create a ticket under winwardsoftware.com slash uh, slash emergency. So as what um, Jennifer said, you, you guys can also access the webinar archives. So you can sign up for future webinars from there and you can also view previously recorded events and you can access it under winwordsoftware.com slash webinars. So if you have questions, that's great. Thanks so much, Annabelle. We do have a question. Um, just remember, if you have questions, you can put them into the question box so we can go over them now. Uh, our first question is from Deborah. She wanted to know, if you have an inventory item that has been added to a serialized item, can you take it out of being a serialized item? Uh, like if it was created as a serialized item, like is that like it was done by mistake like it's the first time that was added as a serialized item or was there a history of it like it does it have transactions because if uh, if it doesn't have any transaction yet like let's say for example you had just created it and you uh, mistakenly select serial numbers and you have the option to uh, and check or you have the option to um, make it as a non-serialized, but let's say for example, it was a serialized item and then there are other transactions before, um, it's not advisable to, uh, you can't actually change it to a non-serialized item because it could actually cause an issue with your previous transaction. So if you, uh, if you switch it to a non-serialized, your uh, previous transactions though, um, will show that it has like a serial number, um, it also, it is also the same, uh, vice versa, like let's say a non-serialized item and you wanted it to switch to serialized item. So it's not advisable because um, it will show like serials required on your previous transaction. So if it's done by mistake and there are other, there are already transactions. So what we can suggest is you can mark it as deleted and then you can create a new um, item. Okay. Uh, all right. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, Deborah said okay. Thank you. Um, the next question I've got here from Alex. Since my last batch count, I had taken some serial serialized items and converted them from new to demo. Now, when doing batch counts, both part numbers are showing up, and the serial number is under both. As such, I can't verify either, as each claims duplicate serial number. How can I fix this? um both have the same uh serial numbers like yes uh do you allow duplicate um serial numbers i mean like are they like valid because um i mean which no. one is correct though uh, Alex said no, he doesn't allow duplicate serial numbers. Mm. Okay, so you have, uh, is that like you have two parts and then, um, and uh, those two parts when you create the batch, it showed the same serial, is that is that right? Mm -hmm. Does I get, okay. Um, let's see. But when you take a look at the inventory um, item itself, like when you go to the edit item, does it show um, that serial number for both parts? Because if you do not allow duplicate serial number, um, it shouldn't be showing on both parts though. 
He added same serial number under two different part numbers. Uh, okay, so which one? Okay, so which one is valid though? Like which one, um, which part should have the that serial number? Because you could actually delete that serial number from the other part, or do you allow that duplicate? Or he, Alex added under edit item, the serial number only appears under the demo item that it was converted to. Uh, converted to uh, let me see and can read from you to demo <laughs> we've got um, some feedback from uh, other viewers as well Deborah said she had the same issue as Alex and it was due to invo invoice posting um, she said, ask Alex if it is highlighted in green, that will be the same issue I had. And then uh, another commenter said that they have the issue as well at their location. So um, that maybe this could be something that we uh, yeah, we need to check in more mm -hmm. detail afterwards. Okay. So yeah, because we need to further, yeah, we need to further investigate on what happened. So Okay, no problem. So I've got your contact information here, Alex, um, and Condon's as well. So we'll reach out to you guys and take a look at this further. Um, the next question, we do scan batch with data collector and ours does not verify the serial number and we have to go into each and check them. Is there a way to change this? Okay, so all right, so I think it needs to be so you're using a data collector, it doesn't verify. I mean, what happened though? Like, it it doesn't include your serial number, or yeah, I think that's what she is explaining. Well, I think we actually need to have it checked. Uh, because if you are using a data collector, I think we have it. We need to have it checked by our technical team why it doesn't uh, include the serial number when they do when you use a data collector. So um, okay, I think they, yeah, they added the can, serial numbers mm -hmm. there, but they have to verify. So maybe it's not always correct or entered properly. Uh, okay. Uh, where do you click on verify? Like, is that from the scan batch itself, or like, is that when you when you uh, when you use your data collector? One moment. Oh, she didn't understand the question. Can you repeat that, Annabelle? Okay, so because you did mention that you still need to verify it, right? So I mean, yeah. um, where do you need to verify it? Like, is that when you use the data collector? Or is it when? Is it from the scan batch uh, itself? Like, where did you? Ah, In the okay. Count. Okay, so ah, all right. So you have the serial number from the scan batch, but when you apply it, you still need to manually verify. Is that right? Okay. Um, all right. It seems that we need to uh, further check on that, though, because supposedly if the serial number is on the scan batch and uh, when you apply it, um, it should be automatically verified because that's the purpose of the scan batch. Uh, when you apply it, you don't need to like go to and manually verify it. So, yeah, I think we need to further check on that. So. Okay, no problem. So we've got a couple support tickets that will open up for you guys uh, and have technicians reach out to assist further. Is there any other questions before we finish up for the presentation? We've got a couple minutes left uh, while we're waiting. Our next webinar is Thursday, February 10th, and we'll be reviewing payroll tax updates uh, and the T4 and W2 forms. So that will be a good one. Um, especially with the new tax tables. If you're using a WinWord software for payroll, make sure you've gotten your tax table updates. And is there any other questions? No, I guess then that's what we'll do. We'll finish up for today. If you think of anything, please give us an email. 
uh, or open a ticket with support and we can help you out. And we will see you in two weeks. Annabelle, thank you for today's presentation. I really appreciate it. No problem. All right, have a great day, everyone. All right, have a great day, everyone. Bye.